For Holy Week this year, we are recording six brief reflections that are explorations of the persons closest to Jesus during his final week. You can watch one each day, Monday through Saturday, or you can binge watch them as you please. Sometimes the stories of Jesus, well, feel like a story, especially to those of us who have heard it so many times. These stories have been painful and rich and life-changing for generations and generations of Christians. But how much more so for those who lived then and loved this man named Jesus? These people, these characters in the greatest story of all time, perhaps found their place in the world, their true calling, as a result of their encounter with Jesus. Let us allow these ancient people to call us more deeply into our faith story. Before we begin, please pause this video and find a small shallow bowl. Place a small dollop of oil in the bowl. A drop of olive oil will do nicely or a body oil such as jojoba oil, whatever you have on hand will do. Please retrieve that now and then restart the video. In this installment, we introduce you to Mary, who was a friend of Jesus and a sister to Martha and Lazarus. In John's gospel, Mary is quiet, contemplative, and emotional. Mary seems to be the only one who was sensitive to the impending death of Jesus and who was willing to demonstrate her love and affection for him in some material and ritual display. Jesus expresses his appreciation for her act of devotion. We read in John's Gospel, the 12th chapter, the first 11 verses. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on, on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Now let us hear Mary's story. I was in the middle of the marketplace that day, and it hit me like an overwhelming wave of feeling. I loved him so much. It was a love beyond anything I'd ever known. Not romantic, not like a sibling, like family, yes, but he was so much more to me. He was teacher, he was priest, he was wise one, he was hope itself. 
And for the first time in those days before the terrible thing happened, I felt he might not be invincible. He had told us, he had warned us. He had been saying this thing could happen all along, but I just couldn't imagine it. He was so eternal, it seemed, like nothing, not even God, would dare to take him away from any of us. But the tension was building. I will beg him, I thought, to not go to Jerusalem, just go back to Galilee, go back to the hills, go to Nazareth, go anywhere but Jerusalem right now. But even as I thought it to myself, I knew that he would go. This is where he was supposed to be. With all these people gathered for Passover, Jerusalem is where he had to be. And I knew he might never leave. I suddenly became aware that I was standing immobilized, oblivious to all around me here in this marketplace, and I began to double over with fear. But just as I did, my eyes came to rest on the stall to my right, a jar, a most beautiful jar of anointing oil. The seller offered it to me for a price that seemed outrageous, and I didn't care. No price could compare with the price my beloved teacher would pay, and so I bought it. Whether in life or in death, my dear friend would need it. Mary's anointing of Jesus belonged to the tradition of honoring someone with sweet smelling oil made of a combination of many herbs. This was used at the consecration of kings and also as anointing for burial. In this one act, Mary offers signs of love and honor. The early Christians used this same scented oil as a part of their baptismal and confirmation rites to emphasize their new identity in Christ, which also means anointed one. So, inspired by Mary's act, we will now anoint each other's foreheads or our own foreheads if we are participating in this service alone as those early Christians did, with a sign of the cross and the words, you are God's beloved child. Now, please take the bowl of oil that you have gathered. Lightly touch it with your thumb and anoint your family or yourself with the oil. Say aloud, you are God's beloved child. You are God's beloved child. You indeed are God's beloved child. May God continue to bless you and uplift you with God's love and grace. Today's musical reflection for the story of Mary is based on the hymn, Wash, O God, Your Sons and Daughters. <laughs> 